Hey guys, and welcome back to how to make elements from household materials. Now today's element will be argon. Now as most people know, argon is inside of most light bulbs. Um, and I have a light bulb inside this uh, glass uh, measuring cup right here. And it's a rather large light bulb, and this will be our source of argon today. So you're going to need a large tub filled with water, and a syringe, and a test tube or ampule or something. You can see I have that down there. It kind of blends in. Um, and then a large measuring cup, and of course a light bulb, or several. Smaller light bulbs will also work, you'll just need more. Now, you're going to have to make sure there's no air inside of this measuring cup, and that it's upside down. Now, any glass container will work for this, but there can't be any air, because we don't want our argon to be contaminated. And then also, our huge tub here is going to have to be uh, fairly deep, so we'll be able to stick the syringe in, um, which is also going to be full of water. You can see there's no air in this syringe. So we can stick the syringe in, squish out the water, and then suck up the argon, and then stick it into the test tube. And the reason for such a large tub is mainly because we have to have all we have to do all of this underwater so that we can't um, have any argon escape um, and mix with the air, because that would lead to an impure sample. Now you also want some sort of stopper. I just modified this slightly larger stopper to uh, fit in my test tube here, and you'll just do that so you can plug it, and when we seal it off. With a blowtorch, um, it will not uh, the argon will not diffuse into the air. Uh, to also help that process, we will be keeping the argon so that the bottom of the ampule is facing the ground because argon is heavier than air. So with all that said, the first thing to do is going to be to take a pair of channel locks or something and break that light bulb underneath this glass container, making sure that no air bubbles get in during the time. So we'll be back in a moment. Okay, so you can see once we've broken it, all that white powder stuff on the inside comes off. Now this is totally harmless. In some of the mercury vapor light bulbs, which are the um, compact fluorescent light bulbs, normally you'll see them as the swirly ones. That actually does contain mercury and is rather toxic, so you want to avoid those. But just normal light bulbs, um, the incandescent type, which is the ones with the filament that gets really hot. Um, any of the white ones, they're just coated with something... To, uh, I, it's probably just for a look or something. I don't know if there's a real purpose. Anyhow, so that all came off and is floating around. And I tried to scoop it out with my hand, um, but that didn't really work. You just it, you can see it's floating around everywhere. But that shouldn't really matter because our, our argon is not contaminated at all. So now we just have to lift this container back up and stick the syringe in, squish out all of the water, and suck the argon in. The water just ensures that there's no air inside of the syringe so that we will get a pure sample of argon. So once I have a syringe of argon, I'll be right back. Okay, so that syringe there is full of argon, right maximum full. And I'm just holding it underneath the weight of this glass vessel so it doesn't float to the top. So now that that's full of argon, we can take our ampule, which we made before. Um, and I just did that by taking a small test tube and stretching it out. Uh, but you could probably use any storage container that you'd like. So we're simply going to take our argon and squish it um, slowly, um, so bubbles of it will rise into the test tube filled with water. Um, you'll you probably want to shake around the test tube because it does have a narrow gap in there, um, just so that they'll all get to the top. And when it's full and there's no more water, then we can stopper it off. And now when you take it out with it stoppered off and everything, you probably want to have some Kleenex or a towel nearby to dry it off. This will just help so that we don't have to evaporate the water and it hopefully won't break when we're sealing it. So I'll be back in a moment once that's all done. Okay, so as you can see, I've successfully done that and it is just floating there because this uh, little uh, stopper on the bottom there is holding it down, so it's floating upwards. Now if you look at the syringe, we only used about half the argon in the syringe and we have a whole lot more here. So what I'll probably do with the rest is store it, but also make a light discharge tube. So we can look at the discharge color of argon. If you don't know what that is, it's essentially where you take a gas and run a high voltage electric current through it at low pressure, and that gas will actually emit a different color depending on which gas it is, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to be trying to do that with the rest of this argon, but there's a sample of pure argon there. Now, to seal this off, we're simply going to be taking this and flipping it the other way around and putting it in some pliers or something. Uh, the other way around, um, because then all the argon will be at the bottom, because argon is actually heavier than there. So it will all settle at the bottom, and the st uh, t stopper will just help it 
diffuse a lot slower with the air because there will be no way for the air to get to it. Now because the test tube was wet there will probably be water vapor and I wouldn't be surprised if the stopper is pushed off and stuff starts escaping but nonetheless we should be able to get a rather pure sample of argon. So I'm gonna go ahead and seal that and I'll be back in a moment. Okay so I was having much too hard of a time sticking it in a um uh, evacuated container and being able to strike an arc in there and show you the light spectrum of argon gas when energized. So I've just put it in this canning jar. You can see all the gas up here. Now when I need some of this I can just take it, uh, submerge the whole thing in a large bucket, then screw off the cap and stick my syringe up and take some argon gas out. Now the reason I was having such a hard time is because um, I, I couldn't make a container that was what they call hermetically sealed. Now this is essentially where it's a perfect um, um, seal so that no air molecules can get in or out so it will maintain a perfect vacuum. And I recently ordered some titanium wire online. And what this will be able to do is um, titanium oxide, or uh, not titanium, I'm sorry, tungsten wire online. And tungsten oxide, I believe, uh, will hermetically seal with glass. So if we heat up the tungsten, then we can... Uh, pinch the glass test tube around it um, and by heating the tungsten it will have created tungsten oxide which will bond to the glass and create a very strong bond hopefully um, with that said so in the future we will be able to show the light spectrum of argon um, and I'll probably just do a big video uh, on the light spectrum of a bunch of different gases and also how to make um, discharge tubes so anyhow I hope you enjoyed this video on getting argon and I'll see you in future videos um, okay, bye